Alright guys, today let's talk about how to set up your soft washing system. So I'm going to go over a little tips and tricks along the way. A couple ways that I set up my personal trailer. Uh, you don't have to do all of this, obviously I use a proportioner instead of batch mixing. So I'm going to show you a couple different alternatives along the route, but I want to show you exactly how I set it up. Hopefully it will help you build your soft washing trailer so you can clean your houses. You can do a stronger mix when you're doing your post treatment and just overall having a, a separate soft wash system is excellent. Um, majority of my business is cleaning roofs. So I run anywhere from two to $300 an hour when cleaning a roof plus chemical cost. Uh, so it's definitely my biggest bang for my buck. A lot of times I do my pull cages, my driveways, my patios, everything else like that, just to get my foot in the door to be able to land the roof. Now, thankfully down here in Southwest Florida, a lot of the communities require it being done every three years. So even though there's a hundred companies in my local area, there's tons of business to be able to, you know, actually grab out there. So, but if you want to charge premium prices, you need to have a premium setup. You need to look legit. You need to be able to do it properly. With this setup, um, I'm only using a five, I'm only using a five and a half gallon, 12 volt machine. You can get into gas pumps. You can get into air compressors. There's all kind of other things, but this is a very cheap way to do it. And I've found for just residential has been amazing. Like roughly a 2,000 square foot tile roof in about 90 minutes. That start to finish from watering the plants to hanging everything up. What more do you want? Let me show you exactly what I speak of. All right guys, so I personally use the five and a half gallon 12 volt North Star from Northern Toll. The reason I love their pump so much is for $20, you can get a warranty that covers everything. So I've already replaced three or four of these, no questions asked, you lose the $20, but who cares? I believe they're about 160 bucks. They are, like you'll see on the blocks, they are made for bleach. Now I hang these upside down here for the fact that I, like, I used to go the other way. The only problem is, is then it started leaking from the seal and going all over. Since I've hung it upside down, I haven't had a single issue. So I highly recommend to do that, do it this way. Now, like I said, I have a proportioner set up. Now I highly recommend getting a nice proportioner set up and I actually have both ball valves here. So you'll get to see. So the middle ball valve, which is for the soap, um, you know, realistically, I'm not a big fan of this ball valve. These valves you can get off Amazon for $30. They're cheap and they break. If you screw them at any bit too much, they crack right here at the seal. So they're a pain in the ass. Now these valves, you can also get off Amazon and a bunch of other stores. They run about 130 bucks a piece. So if you go with these valves, the one you can get away with not having a valve is this one. This is your water. Your water on your proportioner is always gonna be 100% open. So realistically, you could get a $5 little on and off shut off valve and just leave it on at the whole time and actually just use the valves here. So realistically, you could build this same proportioner real easy. I'll make a video on how to actually put it all together from start to finish, but you can build this thing for, I mean, with the good valves, you're looking at about $300. The difference from using one of these to not is batch mixing. So right now I have a hundred gallon chlorine tank. What's the beauty of having a proportioner is I can fill this thing up, fill my main tank up, and I got my little soap bucket right here. Now it's pulling from all three of those. I'm able to have so much of a mix where before what I would end up doing is use this 100 gallon tank and say I was doing a roof batch for the day, okay? You know, maybe I wanted a 4%. So I'm gonna mix this with water and chlorine to make it a 4%. Well, what happens if that customer says, hey, can you do a house wash as well? Well, I don't wanna put 4% on a house wash. I already have this whole thing batch mix. Now what do you do? Then you gotta have a separate tank to do a separate batch mix. It's a pain in the butt and you can't carry as much chlorine. Uh, you might only be able to carry enough chlorine to do one roof job, then you need to fill up again. Where right now I could do you know four or five jobs without ever having to go fuel, uh, fill up the chlorine again. Makes it so much easier. Like I said, it's $300. It's not the cheapest thing in the world. 
Uh, but to give you an idea, let's talk a little bit more about actually how it is set up in general. All right, so with the proportioner instead of batch mixing, because if you were batch mixing, you would just put it all in this tank and you would run one line to here, the other line straight to your actual hose reel itself. But in this sense, using a proportioner, which I highly, highly recommend. So on my chlorine tank, you can see I have a half inch bulkhead fitting and this prevents any leaking of air. Keep it nice and tight in there. And you actually, so you go right from here. Now on the other side of this is a three, so it's half inch on one side, and it's three quarter fitting, male fitting off the other side of this bulkhead. So then what you need to do is go from three quarter to half inch. And then I put a half inch PVC the entire way to the bottom and this much off the bottom of the actual tank itself. So there's no restriction or anything like that. So my chlorine is running from the tank through here. Now, this is a nice little thing. You don't have to do this, but I have a half inch, like I added two little uh, nipples here and then put it to a filter. Now, if any gunk or anything got into my tank, it's gonna filter it out before going to my pump. This is not necessary. The only problem with having this is now you have two more chances for air to release anywhere in here. So if any air enters the system, when you're doing a proportion setup, it causes much issue. You, use lots of, uh, you lose lots of PSI, lots of pressure, lots of problems. So realistically, you don't need, need the filter, especially if you have the warranty on these pumps, 20 bucks and you replace them. Like I own four of these pumps. Just as you see, I got one here and another one there. This one is literally the backup. As soon as this dies, I disconnect these two hoses, connect them to the other one, boom, I'm up and running within two minutes. So it's good to have extra ones of these. So the chlorine line, the blue line you see coming in to the bottom here, and this is the chlorine actual uh, metering valve. Now I turn it left to turn it on, and then to the right goes fully closed. So if I have my water 100% on, 12% chlorine, if I go halfway, that's halfway because it only goes there, uh, halfway, that would make it, well, let's let's first say full way. All the way on, all the way on. Right now, 50-50, that's 6.5% chlorine that you'd be putting onto a roof. A little bit too strong. Now, if you go halfway, that's 3.25%. So realistically, you wanna go halfway, maybe a little bit more, maybe 4%, depending on how bad it is. You know, if I'm pre-treating or post-treating, I might go 4%. But it's nice to be able to have these dials here. With your soap, you only ever, like like most of the time, I'll only put it up half, like halfway between zero and one. If I'm doing like a uh, metal roofs, I don't use any. Uh, when I use tile roofs, I might go to between one to one and a half. And as you see, here's the soap line, the red line, and it's running straight to this bucket of soap. Right now I am using, I have so many different soaps. I'm not 100% sure which that one is. I'd have to look. Um, I think that's Roof Snot, I believe. I'm not 100%. I'd have to, I'll have to let you know in the comments below. Uh, and then the other one, the other, the third and final line, you have the third line running up to your actual tank itself. So I have another bulkhead fitting, as you can see right there, connects right on in. Same thing, I have a half inch PVC that runs the whole way to the bottom of the tank. So all three lines are going into my proportioner. These are check valves. Then you have your metering valves, your T fitting, and then your one line. So everything is feeding in. Your one line is running to the inlet of the pump. Now I have a half inch barb fitting coming off here that's what these actually have like a little locking system which are great the biggest thing with no matter what you're doing anytime you're using metering valve or just using uh, 12 volt pumps in general you want to make sure these fittings are tight as ever if there's any air it's going to cause issues okay so from there then you got the outlet so it goes in all of your mixture is coming in and then you're coming out the other side now I come out into this fitting. Now this looks weird, I understand. The reason I put a T ball valve here, as you see one straight through, 
runs and follows right into my chemical line. The reason I have this extra part here, okay, and all I did was add this line and it feeds right here. So this is coming off my main tank, my IBC, I think it's IBC, tank for water. And this would be the chemical mixture. The reason why I did I added that little valve is if you ever run these 12 volts, uh, at least with the Northern Star, once it builds pressure, it should shut back off. If it's never fully building pressure, it's a couple things that could be going wrong. One, there is a little nipple right there, if you can see. That is what controls the pressure of the pump. Okay, so you wanna have it, right now it is flush with the bottom here. So it should be completely flush. Uh, when, you when you first get it, it it's down like a, like a couple centimeters. So you wanna increase the pressure a little bit. Then I would be checking, uh, are all of my fittings completely tight and there's no air? Thirdly, what ends up happening is, if you gotta think, okay, so, I have 250 feet of chemical line. When I first fire this up, if I ever run it out of uh, fluid altogether, it then, any air that's in the system, it has to push the air out through 250 feet. So that's a lot, it's, it's very difficult for it to do. Instead, I add this little valve here where I can crack just like that and I'm now bleeding the air through five feet of hose. So like when I do that, like if my pump is having trouble, like, it, like I said, it should build pressure then shut off. And then as I'm spraying, it will be running, but as soon as I let go of the trigger, it should shut off again because it built pressure up in the lines again. That's where that comes in handy. I got that thing off Amazon. Like I said, it has three, I put three half inch barb fittings on it, but this actual ball valve uh, three-way ball valve I think I got for about 15 20 bucks more than worth it speeds up the process and it takes a lot of strain off this thing having to try to suck and get rid of the air through 250 feet of uh, pressure line another great thing with that is I also use it to my advantage for when I do little touch-ups I use pump-up sprayers so if I need to, if I don't want to have to run my whole line to the back of the house to touch up a little area, I use my pump-up sprayer. This is perfect for filling up pump-up sprayer. One side, I could fill up water. The other side, I could fill up chemical, all with a little twist of a knob. Makes it super, super easy to uh, make a quick mix of a, uh, for my pump-up sprayer. Now, the only other thing is the electrical part of it. Okay, so they do give you, when you buy these brand new, they have these little connectors on here and then you can buy a little connector that has like little clamps that go onto your battery. The problem I've found with that is this part, for whatever reason, it, it starts to mess up. So what I end up doing is I cut right after it and I splice the wire and then tape it, lug knot it, the whole nine yards. And I run the wire and in this instance, I actually drilled a hole in the back and I have what's nice with like make sure you get one that has an on and off switch and then I ran it to where it actually has battery terminals itself so instead of the clamps it's not loose there's nothing it's nice and tight you have a fuse in line here and you have a fuse in line here so there's a double backup for fuses now if you were ever to overheat this pump this little light will turn on but as a whole, and then lastly, let me show you what I actually use. I must have set it in some dirt here. Lastly, this is what I actually use. I bought this off the Power Wash store, I wanna say 30 bucks. It's a PVC handle, and it's nice because you're able to control it. And I got uh, 80 schedule piping threaded go into a 45 degree bend and then go into your fitting up top now i bought this nozzle here off amazon for i think 10 15 bucks and what i like with it is you can twist the top and go from a missile to you know to hit a two-story house 
to open it up to make it more of a fan pattern, which I use the fan pattern when uh, I'm cleaning roofs or applying it to a house type of deal. So I highly recommend that. The alternative, the alternative that I keep on my trailer as a backup is you just have a fitting right on the bottom, you know, a half inch barb fitting to a ball valve to turn on and off. And then you just connect, I just add, need to add a 40, a 45 here and then the fitting to actually connect the J-Rod. Uh, like I said, I had a $45, $50 J-Rod, uh, but ever since I bought this little $10 fitting off Amazon, I use this instead all the time. This also doesn't rust where a J-Rod can't. But like I said, this is the budget version. Uh, you get the, the, this whole setup, you might be able to build for, you know, 10 15 bucks where this setup you might build for 50 bucks i highly recommend this because imagine when you're on a roof or whatever trying to clean and you got to keep playing with how much this is and this breaks very easy this is durable so much nicer highly recommend getting yourself if you're going to be doing this all the time and you're charging hundreds of dollars per hour spend the money and invest in yourself Sorry to ramble forever. I just wanted to really go into detail so you knew exactly how to set up a proportioner valve, what 12 volt to use, how to hook up your 12 volt, any of the tips and tricks I've learned along the way. And if you've stayed this long in the video, put a hashtag soft wash down below and ask any questions you got. I love to help any way I can. Hope you guys have a great day though. Take care.